Hi, it's Mark with At My Home, and today we're going to take a look at the Logic Keyboard Titan keyboard for the Mac, in particular for Final Cut Pro 10 for the Mac. And Logic Keyboard sent us this for the review. So, actually, we're going to use it for Final Cut Pro 10 because that's what I am a Final Cut Pro 10 editor, but it also works so you can get models of the Adobe for Adobe Premiere Pro, for Avid for DaVinci Resolve and so forth. So a lot of different types of editors you can get these keyboards for. And the cool thing about these keyboards is they've silk screened all the major key tips or key codes that you'd want for your editor. So whether you're, if you're a Final Cut Pro editor, as you can see, there's things like the V key for turning on and off a, a clip. You can skip ahead right? Go to, go to end, go to beginning, things like that. They're all on the keyboard, so you don't have to remember the keyboard shortcuts. And believe me, even though I've been doing this a long time, some of these things you tend to forget. And it's a nice keyboard, because here's, here's the Mac keyboard that I had with the Mac before, and you see there's no key codes or key tips on here to tell me what's what, so you had to kind of learn it. It's a nice keyboard, but... This keyboard from Logic Keyboard is pretty neat. Now it's aluminum, it weighs about 1.3 pounds. It comes with the ability to plug it into USB-C. They use that for charging or for connecting to your Mac. Uh, it also has an on-off switch and it supports Bluetooth, which is really kind of cool. I mean, I like to use my keyboard with Bluetooth and have no cables. It also comes with a really long USB-C cable. So this is nice, I can leave this on my desk and when the battery gets low, I can, uh, charge it up. So from a size perspective, if you look at it and you look at the two keyboards, and you can see them right here, but take a look at this picture, you'll notice that the keyboard from Logic Keyboard is just slightly wider than the Apple keyboard, but the height-wise are about the same. So it's a little bit thicker, slightly wider, but really as far as your hand placement and your key usage, it works great. One thing else is cool about this is, I'll turn it on here, is you'll notice it's backlit. And the cool thing is you can change the amount of backlight, right? So that's lower, and then there's like, I think it's five levels on here. And you can see the different key combinations are nicely lit up. Now, obviously, if you leave it really bright, it's going to use the battery quicker. Uh, if you keep it on dim, like I usually do, then it'll last you a long time. A long time maybe being a little less than a week if you're doing it dim, depending on how much work you're using on this keyboard. Because it will go to sleep, so it doesn't waste battery. Um, it also has all these function keys. And so like you can switch between, like this is on Bluetooth right now, and I can switch it over to the wired interface if I want, but I'm gonna leave it on Bluetooth because that's what I like to work with, right? And then the other thing you can do with this, and this is where the user manual they give you is really handy. They give you this user guide, and normally I don't use the user manual, but there's a few keys that you wanna make sure you know how to use on this keyboard that basically have to do with the keyboard. As I mentioned, you need to know the key combination for dimming the keys or not, the switching from Bluetooth to wired. Uh, but also, there's a function lock key here, and that's kind of handy because what you want to do is do the function lock. Then all these functions over here along the top are now locked in where you don't have to hit the function key to get them to execute. Um, the other one's kind of neat. If you look in the thing here, um, I can do something like this. So, for example, I've got the... the uh, text here selected. I've selected the three text fields. I can hit the V key and it disappears because that's one of the keyboard shortcuts in Final Cut Pro, which I really I kind of like that, right? Now, the other thing is, is that if I want to go and do some of the command keys, you know, the key tips or the, basically the keyboard shortcuts are all listed here. And in the case of Final Cut Pro, the, these keys here, of course, are the single presses and you get it. But some of these keys up here, the pink row, you need to hit either the command key or the command shift key. So for example, if I want to take the audio meters and turn them off, I can go command shift eight, and you see they're off. If I press command shift eight again, they come back on. The other one I can never remember is video scopes. And that was just a command seven, and you see the video scopes come up. Hit it again, it goes off, right? So this is really nice to be able to do that. Good key feel. Easy to find the keyboard shortcuts that you can't remember, and even the ones you can. So it's kind of handy when you don't really remember what the things are. You have other ones, for example, here. 
I might say I want to go to the end, right? Brings it automatically to the end, goes to the beginning. I don't do that very often, but it is kind of nice. So all the key tips have, I think it's over 60 different key combinations that they've put onto the keyboard. It's made my life a lot easier doing editing on Final Cut Pro. Thank you for watching.